Van Weezer! I thought, I thought you were dead! I wasn't even sure you existed! Oh, I exist. And I go by Jared now. Well, shit, okay. This son of a bitch took more than two years to release. Having originally been announced in February of 2019, then formally announced in August of 2020, or uh, tw September, I don't remember, and then eventually delayed from May 2020 to May 2021. It was this whole mess. It finally just came out. Was it worth the wait? Perhaps not. That being said, I did enjoy it a little bit more than expected. I wasn't too keen on the singles that were released for it. The end of the game was alright. I wasn't a fan of Hero. The beginning of the end was my favorite of the bunch. And the last one I need some of that was fine, but it's not one that I'd see myself going back and listening to multiple times. Taking all this into account, however, listening to the album in its entirety did improve my opinions a little bit on some of the singles. The album opens up with a fixed up version of Hero, which I found much more enjoyable than the original, and I'm really, really glad they did that. Though I have to say, I hate that they made this the opener as opposed to the end of the game. I think the end of the game would have made a much better opener, it just sounds more like one. I also ended up liking the album version of The Beginning of the End more than the Bill and Ted 3 version, despite its shorter length. As structurally, I found it more pleasing, and they added some cool new bits to it. I also enjoyed I Need Some of That in the context of the rest of the album. As far as how the album goes outside of the singles, I think it certainly has its moments, but there was definitely no wow moment that I got from over and over again from OK Human. I do wish this album was released before OK Human like originally intended because I think OK Human just kind of blows it out of the water to be honest. The second track All of the Good Ones is a highlight to me as it has that feel good summery Weezer vibe that a lot of great Weezer songs have. And in a strange way some of the song sounds like it could have been on the Red album almost. That was definitely a highlight though. It's a very laid back, very smooth and a uh, very catchy take. The first disappointment for me came on track six with Blue Dream. The song samples Crazy Train by Ozzy Osbourne a little bit too heavily and it really pays for it in my opinion. Although the minor mode with the heavy guitars is certainly an ear pleaser, it simply derives from Crazy Train a little bit too much to have it be this new original thing that I enjoy. I also wasn't expecting the song to be a version of The Ballad of the Briny, which is a Rivers Cuomo demo, and I think that fact also kind of detracts from the quality of the song, as that song is very highly praised by a lot of fans, the original demo, and it the new version, the Blue Dream version, almost doesn't live up to the demo version. And I can see that being a huge turnoff to a lot of people that love the demo and wish that it was kept the way it was. Uh, I'm kind of one of those people. My favorite song on the album is the following track, One More Hit, which I thoroughly enjoyed despite some of the lyrics being a little questionable, such as, pump it up into me, please daddy, please daddy, pump it up into me. The song's hard-hitting guitars are a hair razor, the changing sections and tempos add variety, and the tune at its core almost sounds like something from the Pinkerton era. The album really falls flat for me after this, however. Sheila Can Do It may be a Weezer deep cut classic, but I think the instrumentation on the cut that made the album is makes it rather bland compared to the original version, and it's just kind of a snoozer because of it. The song at its core is pretty catchy, though. I often find the chorus stuck in my head. The song She Needs Me was the real bane of the record, however, as it sounded like it could have been written in five minutes. And the song is so lifeless that I would have been surprised if it even made the track list of Ratitude or Make Believe. Honestly, it might even fit perfectly in one of those albums. I wanted to skip that song very shortly after starting it, but I endured through. The album does end on a high note, however, with Precious Metal Girl, a really nice acoustic closer. And it's a nice listen, and it's a really pretty song. Another thing I enjoyed about this record were the little transitions in between songs, because that always adds to the completeness of uh, the continuation of a record. Overall, I think the album did what it was supposed to do, which was be a fun, metal-inspired pop rock album. But some areas fell very short, and ultimately I didn't find it anything all that ear-catching. I'm feeling a moderate to strong six on this thing. Let me know what you thought of Jared. Uh, I thought it was just okay. Yeah. <laughs>